In this video, you'll learn the following things. How to customize column settings, how to display a binary image from the database in a grid cell, and how to use the master detail functionality to display additional binary images with tile view. We'll start with an application we created in our previous video on getting started with Entity Framework. To watch this video, click the link in the upper right corner. In it, I used the DevExtreme project template, included the Entity Framework packages, scaffolded the DevAV sample database in my project, and set up dependency injection for Entity Framework DB context. Let's open the index.cshtml file and remove the demo grid that was created by the project wizard. I'll right click and select Insert DevExtreme Control here. I'll select Data Grid and hit Next. I'll select Dev AV DB Context Model Products and select a new Web API controller, which will be named Products Controller, and hit Next. On the last page, I'll leave all columns selected, and for this demo, I'll leave the CRUD operations checkboxes unchecked. Once the wizard is finished, let's run the application to make sure we have the grid displaying our products information. As you can see, there's too much information now, which makes it unreadable for the end user. So let's first add some options to the grid like filtering, focused row, and pager settings. Another feature I'll add is the column chooser. This allows your end user to show or hide columns as desired. If I run the application, you'll see all the options which I configured are available, including filtering. On the right top of the grid, there's a button. When I click it, a column chooser pop-up appears, which enables me to drag columns out of the grid, which will disappear from it, but appear in the column chooser. From there, I can drag them back into the grid. We don't want to overwhelm your end user with all these columns, so we can also specify columns to be hidden by default. Let's go back to Visual Studio and hide a couple by default by using the visible false configuration option. If we run the app again, we see a cleaner grid with less information. If we tick the button at the right top of the grid, we see the other columns in the column chooser so we can drag them back in if we want to. Another interesting thing to mention is that if you take a look at the product support ID and product engineer ID columns, in code they are integer ID fields, but yet they show the engineer names. What the scaffolder did is not only analyze the models, but also the relationships between models. And as a result, it created a lookup column type and added an action method to the products controller as well to fetch the lookup data. Since the data grid checks the field name and uses a standard convention to create the title based on the field name, we might want to change the title of those engineer columns to something more convenient. We can do this by specifying the Caption Configuration option. First, for Product Support ID, and next for Product Engineer ID. If we run the application now, we'll see that the column captions of those two columns have changed. If we take a look in the products table with the database explorer, there are two columns containing binary data. These are product image and product primary image. Let's see how we can display the product primary image as an actual image inside the data grid. For this to happen, there are a couple of things we need to do. First, we need to set up a template for one of the columns which will request an action method as an image for the product we're dealing with. Second, we need to create that action method in the products controller, which needs to read and output a resize version of the binary image. It also needs to determine the image type, like JPEG, PNG, or GIF, so it can output the correct MIME type. 
I'm going to use the product ID column for displaying the product image. First, I change the auto-generated caption for this column to image. Next, I'll set up some additional configuration properties for this column, like a width of 100 pixels, and I'll disable filtering and sorting on this column. Last, I'm going to add the cell template configuration method, which can receive a razor fragment. A razor fragment is specified with the at text elements and can contain plain HTML markup with some special constructs. I'll insert the following code here. It's an ordinary HTML image tag, but watch the special construct at the end, the ID and dash value. This value will be replaced with the data value where this column is bound to, in this case, the product ID. If we run the application, the first column has a caption image, but no images are shown. This is because we now need to create the action method, which determines the MIME type and outputs a thumbnail image of the original binary image in the database. I'll create a new c -sharp file named utils.cs. This file will hold a static class image extensions. The class will have a couple of extension methods that help determine the MIME type and resize the image before outputting to save bandwidth. The image manipulation is done by the system.drawing.image class, and the MIME type detection is done by using the system.drawing.common.image codec info class. The first thing I'll do is set up a static image codec info array, which will hold a table with all image codecs known by .NET. An image codec has a special format ID and a MIME type. I'll make sure the appropriate packages are configured in the project and their namespaces are used in this file. Now I can create an extension method for the image class named getMimeType. This method will call another extension on the raw format property of the image object. This method will check the image.rawFormat.FormatID against the static codex array and will return the MIME type of the element matching the format ID. If we now load a byte array into an image object, we can determine its MIME type. The last method in this class will be used in the action method, which will return the image and MIME type. This method is an extension method on a byte array and will have a width and height parameter as well as outputting a string parameter called MIME type. It will return a resized version of the byte array used in this method. Next, we'll use the get thumbnail image method of the image class to create a thumbnail of the inputted byte array. Then it will set the MIME type of the thumbnail image to the original MIME type, and it will use another memory stream to create a new byte array with the thumbnail and returns that together with the MIME type. Now I need to set up the action method primary image in the products controller. This method will receive an ID, so its signature will look like this. The first thing is to locate the product with the specified ID. And if it's found and has binary data, I can use the create thumb array extension method directly on the data.productPrimaryImage byte array to get its MIME type and a resized version of the image. Now I can use the byte array and MIME type in the file method and return its result. If something didn't work, I'll return the not found result. Now if we run the application, we can see that the images are displayed in the first column of the grid. If we take another look in the database, there is a table called product images, which holds additional images for all products. Let's use the master detail functionality of the data grid to render the additional images in the detail row. Back in the index.cshtml, 
I'll enable the master detail configuration of the grid by specifying the following code. I'll specify the master detail template with a razor fragment as I've done for the primary product image. I'll put a div inside the template with a title. Next, I'll insert a DevExtreme tile view inside the template, which will populate its items by calling the get method of the product images controller. Note that I'm using the load params method to pass the product ID as a parameter in the action method. I'll also set some additional properties on the tile view like height and direction. And the last thing I'll configure here is the item template for the tile view. Please note that I'm not using a razor fragment, but an ordinary string parameter because nested razor fragments are not supported. The item template uses a div, which has the image as background rendered by the style attribute. As you can see, the image ID is specified in the same way as we did with the primary image. Now I'll create the product images controller by using the DevExtreme scaffolder again. I'll right click on the controller folder and select controller. Next, I can select DevExtreme API controller with actions using Entity Framework. I'll select Dev AV Context at Data Context class, Product Images as Model class, and create a controller named Product Images. Once the scaffolder completes, I need to add the product ID parameter to the get method and update the link query to select by product ID. The last thing we need to include is an action method named image, which will output the binary data as an image. This code is similar to the method we added to the products controller. To make the tile view show the images the way we want to, there is a bit of CSS that needs to be included in the site.css class. Now if we run the application, we'll have our product grid including primary image. If a product row gets expanded, we'll see a tile view rendering the pictures from the product images table. And that's it for this video. To learn more about DevExtreme, you can watch more videos from our playlist or read the documentation on our website. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you have questions, please comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified anytime we release new content. Thanks for watching, and thank you for choosing DevExpress.